I bet. And that's it for now. I'll have a summary of the news at half past eight. Thank you for that, Tina. Well, the big subject today, of course, is the weather. Uh, Cecilia, how good is it going to be? Well, it's going to be a scorcher today, basically. 19 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning at the International Airport. That's not bad at all for the time of year. So we're looking at highs today, 26, 27, possibly 28 degrees, especially in the north and west. A little bit cooler at the east coast if the heat's too much for you. Lots of very strong sunshine. Possibility of an isolated thunderstorm in the west later on today. All change for the weekend. Some heavy rain around on Saturday morning but it will dry up in some areas especially the east on Saturday afternoon so don't rule the day out completely if you're heading to Slane tomorrow evening well it should be dry by then and uh, Anne has traffic and travel well, as it's Friday morning and we're coming into a bank holiday weekend, traffic remains very light on the main routes into Belfast. We've just a slight build-up on the M2 from Duncruz Street and the West Link's busy as usual going towards the M2 and the M3. Then tonight, expect delays in Coleraine as there'll be a parade taking place from 8.30 until around 11 o'clock tonight. And at the City of Derry Airport, there's almost a two-hour delay to this morning's flight from Stansted. It's now due at 10 to 12. Uh, It's uh, seven minutes past eight. Now, election campaigning uh, has resumed after the Manchester bombing and Jeremy Corbyn is making the controversial argument that the UK's foreign policy has a role in reducing the threat of terrorism at home. Labour's Barry Gardner says there's no doubt that some young radicalised men in the UK have used the excuse of British foreign policy. There is no simple causal relationship here I think that's clear but what Jeremy's saying I think is really that we need profoundly to reassess the way in which there are linkages and this Abedi he was uh, someone who visited Libya who is thought to have fought against Gaddafi in Libya who was then radicalised as a result of that whole process Security Minister Ben Wallace thinks Jeremy Corbyn's comments are crassly timed. We have changed our investment into our counter-terrorism to match the change in the way these terrorists operate. So it's not just about police uh, on the street, it's about our intelligence services. We've increased funding in counter-terrorism across the board. So from £11.7 billion, we've taken it up to £15.2 billion. That's above what was planned. Well, let's talk about this with the associate editor of The Mirror, Kevin Maguire, and Dr. Alan Mendoza, who's the executive director of the Henry Jackson Society. Um, good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, Kevin, if, if I can start with you, uh, I mean, are there two issues here that maybe will be uh, making the, the, the headlines over the course of the day? Um, number one, what Jeremy Corbyn is saying, but number two, when he's saying it. No, no, I think absolutely. He knew it would be controversial, but there's less than two weeks to polling day now, and issues need discussing and airing um, after the uh, outrage of the terrorism in in Manchester. But no, there's no there's no doubt. We heard Ben Wallace, the security minister, there with his totally inappropriate. That's because he disagrees with them. Crassly timed. He would prefer the debate not to be there. They they know it's a risk in in the Labour Party, but they feel it it has to be said, and people are discussing it. You hear it in uh, in pubs that people are discussing uh, British foreign policy and terrorism. As they denounce it, it's why does it happen? How do you respond? So he's taking part in that debate. How much of a gamble is it to make the speech on the first day after uh, campaigning resumes? Yeah, it's quite a gamble, quite a big gamble. Uh, but it's such a huge issue. You can't ignore it after what happened in... Manchester, and in many ways, it would be odd if it wasn't uh, addressed that he went on uh, to some uh, some domestic issue because we've all seen the the terrible scenes from Manchester and the photographs and hearing of the li- life stories of the maimed and the dead. Uh, we're all discussing it, but there is, of course, a wider a wider context to it. And uh, I understand if you're the governing party why you want to shut down debate uh, both on on foreign policy and also the resources going into policing and the NHS. And you understand, again, why, if you're an opposition party, you want to want to open it. it, it open it. And in, a, in an election campaign, uh, politics is never more intense, but often it makes less sense when people decline to, to debate. They basically just want to shout at each other. Um, Dr Mendoza, we, 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 the, the papers this morning are, are giving a, a flavour of what Mr Corbyn's going to say. Um, He will say, an informed understanding of the causes of terrorism is an essential part of an effective response that will protect the security of our people, 
that fights rather than fuels terrorism, we must be brave enough to admit that the war on ter- terror is simply not working. I mean, an awful lot of people w- will, will say he's hit the nail on the head. Well, um, I think it's uh, wonderfully ironic that you've got um, Kevin Maguire on uh, this morning because his newspaper, to its credit, uh, was, I think, the only major UK newspaper yesterday to cover a story which actually tells you from ISIS itself why they are conducting their war against us. And it turns out, you can look at the article, um, it's, it's in uh, yesterday's Daily Mirror, it turns out ISIS itself say, yes, we do talk about foreign policy as a factor, but guess what? Even, even if there was no foreign policy in any Muslim country, we would still come and attack you until you adopt Islam. That is their own word. So this is a moot debate in my point, from my point of view. I can't understand why when ISIS itself tells you what its reasoning is, that it is ideology, that it is a walkthrough of religion, that we somehow believe it's about us when it's about them. Kevin Maguire? Well, I think we know, and Tony Blair has now uh, admitted that what happened in Iraq in uh, 2003 was one of the factors for the rise of, uh, of ISIS. Foreign policy does have an influence. There's no, there's no doubt the extremist fanatics, the zealots of uh, ISIS are totally warped. Uh, but nevertheless, foreign policy, as we've seen in the past, for instance, after the London transport suicide bombers of 2005, videos were left citing uh, um, British foreign policy as a factor. And the uh, bombing uh, of Libya in 2011, creating what is now a failed state overrun with uh, Islamist terrorists. The bomber in Manchester, Libyan uh, heritage, went to Libya. His family, uh, family are there. It does appear to be a factor, and I, and I think we do need to discuss it. I think it's perfectly legitimate for people to have differing views, but this idea of trying to shut down the debate and not discuss it uh, and just pretend that the so-called war on terror is, is working well, I think that's, that doesn't do anybody any favours, and it won't protect people in the future because you have to respond to terrorism with, yes, security, but there are other other ways too. And why why do people get sucked in okay. and become terrorists? Uh, uh, Dr Mendoza, I mean, do, do you think Jeremy Corbyn then has totally misjudged this one? No, I'm not going to get involved in the debate about the election. I think, actually, what Kevin said, it's quite right for people to debate these issues. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's for people to make up their own minds at home about... Uh, what he has said. I just want to come back to the core point, though, and it's interesting Kevin mentions Libya, because, of course, where did, or why did um, the bombers' parents flee Libya in the first place? They fled from the evil Gaddafi regime. They fled, they were Islamists, they fled to Britain, Britain took them in. Britain then helped remove Gaddafi, i.e. the very person who uh, the bombers' parents had fled from, and now somehow people are pretending this is about foreign policy when the foreign policy of this country helped actually to achieve, if you want to look at it that way from the point of view of foreign policy, what the bombers' family was actually after in the 1990s. So this foreign policy, the problem with it is it doesn't work. What comes down to it at the end of the day is the constant in all of this, the constant from the 1990s, from the 2000s, from now, is that while the foreign policy changes, the ideology does not. And the issue therefore comes back to this. If there is no ideology, then there is no terrorism. If there is ideology, you can add in things such as the foreign policy, other matters as well, but it's all about, it comes back to... But the foreign policy, you would at least admit, is a contributory factor. It is a small factor, but you've got to understand how the Islamists use foreign policy. In the 1990s, they used our failure to intervene in Bosnia as an example for why we should be attacked, basically. So they were saying, because we didn't intervene. In Syria, they said, because we didn't intervene, we therefore should be, uh, we are helping Assad, and therefore you should fight us because we're helping Assad. So they, when you say foreign policy, it refers simply to the excuses and the arguments they're making. Yes, they can probably make those arguments about intervention in one place and non-intervention in another, but it comes down to the cause they're asking people to fight for. And that cause is the cause of radical Islam. Okay, uh, I'm sure we'll uh, hear more about this uh, after uh, Jeremy Corbyn's speech later today, but uh, time has beaten us, unfortunately. Uh, Thanks to you both. That's uh, Kevin Maguire from the, uh, The Mirror and also Dr Alan Mendoza, the Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society. It's 16 minutes.